We have to talk about the Don't Worry Darling tea. <laughs> Every time something new has come out about Don't Worry Darling, Florence has posted about a different project on her stories. And today she posted the Oppenheimer movie poster thing. I caught it pretty early on, right after the Don't Worry Darling trailer dropped. And Olivia Wilde afterwards goes on and posts this like, I loved working with you, Florence. You were fantastic post. Her team is working overtime to try and make us think there's no beef between these two. Florence is working overtime to promote every single project that's not Don't Worry Darling, and that is very unlike her. I analyze press junkets and press tours. If you've been following me forever, you know I do that. If she's doing press for this movie, I'm going to be watching it like a hawk. She's not going to be able to cover how displeased she's been with this whole process. Oh my god, it's been so long since I recorded a video. This actually feels super weird, but hello. Thank you so much for joining me. I just want to talk really quickly today about why I feel like Harry's new movie, Don't Worry Darling, where he stars opposite of Florence Pugh and was directed by Olivia Wilde, is a total shit show. This video will discuss onset and offset things that have made this movie a complete disaster, all thanks to Olivia Wilde and Harry as well to some degree. Before we start with that, I just want to quickly remind everybody that my ebooks are now available and released. Uh, this Thing Upon Me and Neon Red, you can read the descriptions for each here. Uh, they were available for pre-order before, but they're officially released, so you can now purchase the book and get it downloaded instantly to your Kindle or your Kindle app. The last book to be released will be The Nobleman. It's a historical romance or historical fiction, and it'll be released August 20th, so you can still pre-order it now, and then beyond August 20th, you can purchase it if you want. And I'll leave the links in the description for that. So back to Don't Worry Darling and why it is a complete and utter shit show. I do want to preface this by saying one, I actually do find this story uh, somewhat interesting. It did intrigue me when I watched the trailers. However, all of the politics that are going on behind the scenes, all of the drama, all of the underhanded uh, dynamics that were formed on that set, and the sort of corrupt partnerships that are uh, extending from that set have disturbed me to the point where I just I cannot watch this movie. When I watch the trailer, apart from the storyline being intriguing, I cringe continually for multiple reasons, many of them revolving around who Olivia Wilde is, her past, her associations, and her current behavior. So I'll get into that later in the video, but I do want to say the story did intrigue me, it's just that it was ruined by who the director is. And I also want to say, believe it or not, I actually despise the idea that a female director of a major studio film has to be criticized in this way. Because we know how far and few in between opportunities like these for female directors arise, and historically how female directors have been treated in Hollywood both by the public, by the critics, and by the Directors Guild itself. It's truly heinous. So I do hate that a female director has to be criticized on this level but facts are facts they can't be ignored just because she's a female I'm big on facts and I think facts should lead over feelings and over biases so the point and the distinction I want to make before I even begin is that the criticism surrounding Olivia Wilde and her latest film don't worry darling are not unjustified they're not unwarranted. And I'm here to insist that just because you're a female, it does not set you or your work above criticism. Criticizing Olivia responsibly and justifiably is not misogyny and it is not hate when those criticisms and those arguments are valid and sound and backed by facts. So this video will show you precisely that distinction. So I'll try to keep it as short as possible, but there is regretfully a lot to cover. And because I like being objective with how I deal with facts and how I interpret them, I will be totally remiss not to acknowledge that there is a vicious hate campaign being waged against Olivia online, similar to hate campaigns waged against all of Harry Styles' public female partners. I can admit that because I'm not a disingenuous asshole. However, while I don't condone hate and harassment of anyone, 
I do very much condone pointing out facts, no matter how uncharitable or harsh they may be towards the person in question. I'm going to use my voice, my platforms to speak the truth and to point out facts that I think are critical and worthy of note. However, that will never translate to me going to Olivia's uh, account or starting hashtags about her on Twitter and inundating her with hate 24-7. There's a distinction between the two. And I hate that my criticisms of her have been conflated with the hate campaign against her on Twitter. And they've been conflated with that hate campaign in uh, the Daily Beast, which is hilarious, but I'll get into that later as well. So while some of the criticisms and outright lies being spread about Olivia are despicable and the result of bitter, hateful trolls, many of whom are very young, most criticisms floating around about her when you take them down to the facts, the hard facts, regardless of who is speaking them, are valid and they are deeply troubling and they are only being disregarded or swept under the rug because Harry Styles has decided to platform her to get ahead in his film career. It is totally an orchestrated partnership that is probably contractually binding. However, I do believe it is a move that he has shown signs of regretting of late, which I will talk about later. So that is to say, just because there are trolls targeting Olivia because of her association to Harry Styles does not for a second invalidate the very legitimate and incredibly concerning issues surrounding Olivia's past, her present behavior, her hypocrisy, her associations, and her latest film project. Two things can be true at once, and the latter, in my opinion, far outweighs the former in terms of significance when it comes to discussing the subject of Olivia Wilde. The first major issue that has been being pointed out more frequently of late um, and seems to be pretty legitimately concerning is the idea that the plot is glorifying sexual assault. There are two schools of thought. It's okay for a sexual assault to be depicted, especially if the subject matter is handled correctly in, in the context of the film. However, the way Olivia has marketed Don't Worry Darling, she has centered a lot of the film around female pleasure and sort of like this revolutionary depiction of female pleasure that hasn't been done before or some shit like that. And that's pretty concerning based on spoilers about the plot to the film, which include Florence Pugh's character, which is Alice in the movie, being held in some sort of simulation against her will by her husband. They're like in this cultish, um, 50s neighborhood or setting. I don't know if it's actually set in the 50s or if this is going to be like a whole um, set up by some creepy guy like the, like a cult or something that is uh, sort of depicting the 50s. So we don't know what the truth about that is. We just know that um, the movie appears to be set in the 50s and that the plot definitely involves the main character Alice being trapped in this community against her will by her husband's hand. The question will come down to whether the scenes Olivia glorified regarding female pleasure take place before Alice is captured or after. If they take place before Alice is captured, then it's likely consensual sex between her and her husband. If they take place after she's been captured, then it most definitely is depicting non-consensual sex. And that's problematic but where it becomes of issue with the movie is Olivia Wilde's marketing of those scenes specifically and how she frames those scenes when she was discussing it, I believe in Vogue, if I'm not mistaken. She went on and on about female pleasure and how this is, this is great, it should be depicted this way. So that's incredibly problematic. If you're discussing sex scenes that took place that were non-consensual and where the girl was participating in these sex acts against her will. So that's something we won't actually know until the film comes out. But once that film drops, we'll be able to determine whether Olivia was indeed glamorizing these sex scenes where this girl is being, is being essentially so we'll see what comes of that. And on a similar note, the next major issue coming out about the film that is very legitimate is that supposedly there was no intimacy coordinator on set. And I'm just going to play this clip here. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm an intimacy director and a theater professor. We were talking about Stranger Things and intimacy coordination and someone's asked about Don't Worry Darling. 
So, Abby, looking up Don't Worry Darling, I cannot find that they have utilized an intimacy coordinator. This film began shooting in 2020 and then halted due to COVID. So based on the date and the fact that I can't find anything on IMDb and I can't find any articles involving an intimacy choreographer or a coordinator, I think it's safe to say that they did not utilize one for this project. I watched the trailer and... Ooh. Ooh. That's a lot. Some other things that make this, I think, a lot stickier is the director, Olivia Wilde. So Olivia made her directing debut in 2019. This began shooting in 2020. She is also in a relationship with Harry Styles. So already we've got a lot of power things in play. And this is similar to the True Blood issue where you've got one actor who is directing scenes of intimacy involving an actor that they're in a personal relationship with. So we can already see how that's pretty awkward and poor Florence Pugh. What? Olivia Wilde in articles goes on and on about how steamy it's going to be and how different it is and goes on to comment also in another article that there just aren't really good sex scenes anymore. So it's like she's trying to fill this void with really good steamy sex scenes in film which like fine, just like most people care about the story and if the sexiness sells the story and tells the story, great. But right now, I haven't seen it, haven't seen the film, but right now it feels like we're just trying to market a really great sexy film that has a menacing plot line threaded through that. She goes on to talk about how she wants to center the female gaze and to center all of the scenes involving simulated sexuality around the lead female character's point of view. Hi, just because something centers the female point of view does not make it ethically correct or ethically safer. There's a lot of talk about how these uh, simulated scenes are going to be different and edgy and how they're really, really good and it focuses on the female gaze. That's fine, but it still doesn't sound like there are any precautions being taken care of on set for the actors, one of whom is being directed in sexual intimacy by their partner who doesn't have any training. And based on the language that's been used so far, I just don't feel super confident. That was a totally above board, healthy process. If there was no intimacy coordinator on set, I find it incredibly problematic that the director was, again, glamorizing the sex scenes. And that's essentially why she wanted Harry in this movie anyway. It's because he has a huge female fan base, and he is a uh, megastar, and he is very adored by women everywhere. And so he is being used, in my opinion, he's being exploited as a uh, sex symbol. Florence Pugh is as well. So it's just a lot of shady shit that is going on behind the scenes with this movie and the intimacy coordinator being absent is highly problematic. Now in comparison, Harry is starring in a film called My Policeman that will be released in November, I believe. The director, I believe his name is Michael Grandich, the instant he talked about the intimate scenes in his movie, unlike Olivia, he instantaneously mentioned that there was an intimacy coordinator. He didn't depict the scenes as super erotic, he depicted them as intimacy and as art and um, they were sort of emotionally driven. And so I just respected the hell out of him for mentioning the intimacy coordinator the second he mentioned the sex scenes. So the film is not being marketed around the sex scenes like Olivia's movie is, um, where you see uh, a lot of the sex taking place in each trailer. Most of the scenes are of Harry going down on Florence Pugh or them making out. So it's just very weird if she's marketing the movie that way and all of the scenes turn out to be and I hope she receives all the backlash in the world for that. Don't worry, darling, is being historiographically fickle, and now I need to make it your problem. Another major issue with this film that I personally have a problem with is Olivia Wilde hiring a Kroll to uh, be a part of the cast, specifically because of her old ties to Harvey Weinstein, which we will talk about in the third part of this video. 
but uh, the Crow family, Nick Crow is who she hired for her film. He is the son of um, Jules Crow, who runs K2 and Crow, which are like private investigation firms and they do a bunch of other stuff. But they were employed by Harvey Weinstein. Uh, the Crow firm was like his biggest henchman. And they, and they profited off of systematically silencing, smearing, and intimidating Harvey's victims especially Ambra Gutierrez, which was one of his most outspoken victims, and she almost gave everybody the smoking gun when she recorded him on a police wire. I find it very problematic because of Olivia's history with Weinstein that she hired a Kroll to be in her movie. I don't care if she, you want to argue that Nick Kroll didn't do anything. I think it's completely moronic to presume that Nick Kroll was never advantaged by his father profiting off of being Harvey Weinstein's henchman. I think that's utter bullshit. I'm pretty sure Nick Crow leverages his family's wealth and influence to get him things in life and that is not okay. Because as far as I have seen, he has never called his dad out publicly for working with Harvey Weinstein and other predators to silence, intimidate, and smear women who are victims of vicious predators. So uber feminist Olivia Wilde hired Nick Kroll to be in her movie despite his family's history and despite her history with Harvey Weinstein. So she is intimately acquainted with what Harvey Weinstein did and who he was associated with, yet she still hired a Kroll for her movie. And this is again going to play more heavily into the third part of this video. The next part that is deeply disturbing about this movie is that Olivia Wilde entered the set of Don't Worry Darling engaged to Jason Sudeikis for seven years and they had two children together. By the time she left the set of Don't Worry Darling, she had ditched her fiance of seven years, blindsided him in doing so. He said in GQ last year that he's still confused by what happened and why it happened. And then ultimately she ends up dating her employee who was 10 years her junior directly after ditching her fiance. This is problematic for so many reasons, mainly because of the inappropriate working relationship they no doubt had on set because she was clearly cheating on Jason at the very least emotionally with Harry Styles or she ditched him because she saw an opportunity to promote herself and to promote her film. A lot of people argue that Olivia Wilde wouldn't ditch her fiance and her children for a PR relationship and I call bullshit on that first of all because she is essentially twice divorced so she left her husband of nine years for much less than what she left Jason for so what the hell makes you think it will be a problem for her to leave Jason and run off with a super popular megastar and get all the clout she could ever get in the world and to get all the brand deals she could ever get she's probably richer than she ever was she's more relevant than she's ever been and she's been invited to all these elite uh shows and things because of harry and she landed a vogue cover because of harry she has never been on the cover of vogue she has been in hollywood for decades she has never been on the cover of vogue once Harry comes along, she's on the cover of Vogue. So you see this relationship has entirely advantaged her. She has benefited in several different ways. And it's very, very clear that this is an orchestrated PR arrangement between her and Harry to promote this movie. But the sad part is she left her uh, fiance and she ditches her children to pursue it. Leave aside the fact that Harry is totally queer and likely entirely gay but being closeted by his label, Olivia's relationship with Harry is 1000% a PR relationship. Whether you want to argue they fuck or not, it does not matter. That's totally irrelevant. They are still using this relationship factually for public relations and for publicity and for popularity and to remain in the public consciousness. People also neglect to acknowledge that Olivia fancies herself feminist as fuck. So that means she's totally in line with radical feminism, especially the later waves. And so the principles that some of those radical feminists hold totally justify some of the choices she's made or at least Olivia is using them to justify the choices she's made. Oh her kids need to understand that she needs to be happy so it's okay for her to break up her family suddenly and run off with a younger man. That's what she expressed in Vogue in so many words. Her kids need to understand she needs to be happy so at the end of the day she's just a 
giant narcissist. It's all about her. It's all about what she wants at all times, even to the detriment of her family and her children and the men she made promises to. Some radical feminists even frown upon women who choose to stay home and raise their kids or women who enjoy staying home raising their kids. If Olivia is thinking along those lines, it means absolutely nothing to her to ditch the men in her life and to ditch her children to pursue her own purposes. She's very self-serving and that's what we see time and time again. Olivia is incredibly self-serving and very selfish and very manipulative in my opinion. Her ditching Jason and then blindsiding him totally was nothing to her. It meant nothing to her. Her ditching her children to chase clout means nothing to her because she's a feminist. She also had this like creepy, weird, unfunny monologue she did in 2012 where she talked about how little she valued having children and wanting to send them off to boarding school at a certain age and how little she valued her relationship with men and how marriage should only last for about seven years. So again, I say to those people saying she would not ditch her family to chase clout, you're a fucking moron. The other problem with Olivia is that she's a huge hypocrite and she's a fake feminist. So she does don all this feminist glory to get, you know, woke brownie points and to get all these social accolades for being uh, a champion for women when really she has so many associations to predators and abusers of women. It is a fucking joke that she has ever called herself a feminist. So she uses feminism to justify her shitty life choices and the way she treats the men in her life and the way she treats her children. But on the other hand, she ditches feminism when she wants to work with predators to further her career, such as Weinstein, Kiedis, and Paul Haggis, or when she wants to chase a man, a queer man, around the fucking world on his tour for clout for her movie and her directing career. She throws the fucking feminist tenets out the window at that point, which is so laughable. She's like the ultimate poser. When people first started noticing Olivia attending a great deal of Harry's shows on tour because it's giving her this attention and it's giving and it's fueling their relationship because again at the end of the day harry is queer and likely a closeted gay man it's not no wedding and it's not no baby stop fucking lying oh, somebody lying stop fucking and lying and it's sick so he finds it incredibly difficult to perform with women when it comes to pda so he struggles with that and so they do a lot to compensate for that such as walking around aimlessly and holding hands whenever they have different projects coming out they'll go out to be papped uh, by paparazzi and then it'll the paps and the articles that come out about their walks will align perfectly with the drop of certain projects or certain editorials it is laughable at this point. It happened with several pleasing drops now and happened with a couple of editorials now, as well as Harry's album. I'm gonna make a separate video proving why and how Olivia is a PR relationship and um, Harry's dilemmas as a queer man or a closeted man. I'm gonna prove that all in a separate video, but for now, um, I just wanna stick to Don't Worry Darling. People noticed she was attending a lot of Harry's shows because this is the only way they can prove they're in love because Harry is just not an affectionate person and he does not look comfortable around her. So they, they can prove the depth of their relationship by having her attend most of his tour, almost like she works for him, which she essentially does. She is showing up like it's her job. Instead of pursuing other projects and getting on with her life, she is following him around the country and ditching her children in the process. So much so to the point that Jason sued her for custody and she was humiliated at CinemaCon when she was screening the trailer for Don't Worry Darling. She was humiliated with custody papers on stage and it was just perfect karma it was poetic justice and it was what she deserved for how much she neglects her children to chase a young queer man around the country for clout so again i'm going to show in a separate video in painstaking detail with video and photographic evidence and dates why harry and olivia's relationship is a strategic PR arrangement to promote Don't Worry Darling and now they are using it to promote various projects. We have to talk about the Don't Worry Darling team. <laughs> Every time something new has come out about Don't Worry Darling, Florence has posted about a different project on her stories and today she posted the Oppenheimer movie poster thing. I caught it pretty early on right after the don't worry darling trailer drop. and olivia wilde afterwards goes on and posts this like i loved working with you florence you were fantastic post 
Our team is working overtime to try and make us think there's no beef between these two. Florence is working overtime to promote every single project that's not Don't Worry Darling, and that is very unlike her. I analyze press junkets and press tours. If you've been following me forever, you know I do that. If she's doing press for this movie, I'm going to be watching it like a hawk. She's not going to be able to cover how displeased she's been with this whole process. If you're an observant person, it wouldn't have taken much for you to realize. When she was first cast, Florence Pugh was greatly enthusiastic about with not only being a part of this movie, but also with working with Olivia Wilde. She even went so far as to call this woman her idol, which is just fucking tragic. However, as the film progressed, and especially once it got to the end, Florence's energy palpably changed. It was like a flame uh, dying out. And I went through some of her posts, and I found the last post she made for the wrapping of Don't Worry Darling. She took tons of pictures of all the cast and crew and she wrote a long post showing her gratitude towards the cast and crew but never once mentioned Olivia, the director, by name. So there was no special thanks to the director, which is very odd. The director of the film is the captain of the ship. If things had went well and Florence had an enjoyable experience on set with Olivia, with Olivia specifically, she would have been gushing about her and she would have been thanking her, but she did not. Once the fans started to notice the shift in Florence's energy towards the film, not to mention you can't really blame her because this film is just obnoxious. It's been delayed over a year and so it's just kind of drawn out at this point and so I can't blame the cast for being tired of it and being bored of promoting it. So once the fans began to notice Florence wasn't as enthusiastic about the film anymore and that she specifically wouldn't interact with Olivia Wilde anymore and wouldn't like any posts about the movie and would barely even post about the movie herself, people knew something was wrong. They began to speculate that something had taken place on set Plus, there were actually rumors that drama had gone down on set uh, that were kind of suppressed. There have always been rumors of issues going on on set. That's not difficult to see with how utterly unprofessional Olivia Wilde is. She's incredibly unprofessional. She ended up dating her employee 10 years her junior, but she was also walking around set wearing a shirt that said the future is female ejaculation, as if that was cute or hilarious. It's actually deeply perverted and it's a form of sexual harassment and if this was the corporate world, she would have been sued instantaneously. That is incredibly inappropriate and that creates a hostile work environment for people. The way I interpret it is that that is an intimidating set for a man to work on because uh, women are being elevated to such a degree by the director that it makes it uncomfortable because she's doing her fake feminist bullshit. She thinks it's okay to um, treat men as second tier and um, elevate women to such a degree that she's wearing a shirt talking about female ejaculation. It's just highly inappropriate. She's incredibly unprofessional and her relationship with Harry is more evidence of that. It's not surprising that something would have went down on set that made Florence Pugh uncomfortable and made her regretful of being a part of this film or at least regretful of working with Olivia Wilde. There is no other explanation for why Florence's enthusiasm died so completely. The second trailer she did not post at all. The first trailer she posted it on her stories and with no caption and said nothing about it. Whereas if you notice the way Florence promotes all of her other projects is with great enthusiasm. So when the first official trailer came out she posted on her stories and had no caption, had nothing to say and did not speak on it beyond that. When the second trailer came out she did not post anything and clearly sensing that something was wrong Olivia after months of ignoring Florence and after months of making the film all about her and Harry to the point where there are headlines now about her, Olivia Wilde and Harry's Don't Worry Darling completely cutting the lead actress out of the film, Olivia suddenly notices something is wrong. We get three Florence Pugh posts from Olivia Wilde in one day basically kissing her ass and basically trying to set the record straight online for the fans that oh everything is okay when clearly it's not but also trying to frame herself as the bigger person like she's being the diplomatic person she's suddenly praising and kissing Florence's ass and tagging her in two posts and then making three posts about her in one day all of a sudden after you have destroyed and demeaned this movie with this disgusting PR relationship with your much younger employee also with your trash personal drama that overshadowed the film at CinemaCon and humiliated the cast and crew it's like now you want to kiss Florence's ass now that you see that there's a problem because you're so fucking narcissistic and self-involved you probably didn't even fucking notice that there was a problem with Florence before 
so now she wants to post about her and Florence ignored every single last one of those posts and she did not post the second trailer at all and I fucking love her for that because Florence was put in a position by Olivia Wilde and in part by Harry Styles where she no longer feels comfortable even promoting this film she's now being smeared by all of the publications and gossip sites that Olivia and Harry have leveraged to push their bullshit PR relationship she's now being smeared by these publications as being problematic or being jealous of Olivia's relationship with Harry all these gross disgusting uh, demeaning rumors have come out saying Florence is either jealous or she's against uh, Olivia's relationship with Harry and it's just pathetic and I, I have a very strong feeling that Olivia and her team are behind the smear campaign of Florence now ever since Florence ignored her praise when the second trailer dropped. Don't Worry Darling is a total shit show thanks to its director Olivia Wilde and it's so fucking demeaning and misogynistic to insist that, that the only reason anyone would show disdain towards Olivia Wilde in any way is because they're jealous of her being with Harry Styles because they want to be with him themselves. That's completely fucking idiotic. That's not valid and there is no evidence to support that. In the case of Florence Pugh who is in a relationship with I believe his name is Zach Braff. So the fact that people and publications are resorting to saying Florence is just jealous of, of Olivia and Harry's relationship is completely laughable. First of all because Harry is probably gay and closeted it. Second of all because Olivia is out of her prime and she never came close to the success that Florence is currently enjoying. So it's just laughable to insist that Florence Pugh is jealous and wants to be with Harry Styles. She has way too much dignity and she has way too much talent and potential and she is way too sought after to give a fuck about either Olivia Wilde or Harry Styles. I think she is just regretful of having been a part of this film because of the way uh, Olivia Wilde has demeaned it and has humiliated this cast with her trash personal drama. People are not just coming for Olivia Wilde and her associations because she once interacted with a predatory man. People are coming for her as a result of her feminist hypocrisy, her sanctimonious attacks of others online, always moral posturing and trying to assume the moral high ground in debates online, especially about politics, when really she is a shit person herself and this past two years have proven it. People are also coming for her for her close ties and associations with many predatory men for years despite their dirt being an open secret in their industry. This is not us making her responsible for the actions of men. That argument is entirely bogus and intellectually dishonest. These men are horrible, evil, disgusting, and worthless. And many of them have faced justice or are facing justice for what they've done. We are holding her accountable for her own actions with regard to these men, which is perfectly warranted, particularly because she runs around wearing feminism like a costume she can don and doff at her convenience based on her latest career aspirations. I'm not going to reiterate all of her associations because I have done that in great detail in two other videos. I'm just going to go over the latest issue um, that I discussed in my One Direction Scandals video, which was her association to Paul Haggis and their work in Haiti. So I talked about that in detail. I'm going to just plop that clip here so I don't have to reiterate that. There is one other association that I've never mentioned before that I think I should mention now because it's worthy of note. That being her very close connection to the disgraced director and screenwriter Paul Haggis and their oh so noble charity work in Haiti. Paul Haggis is an alleged serial rapist currently being sued by a publicist named Haley Breest who claims Haggis raped her in 2013. And actually, some of her text messages sent to Haggis, which were obtained and revealed in court, which were sent long before the Ronan Farrell expose dropped in 2017, Haley can be found comparing Haggis's actions to that of Harvey Weinstein, because Weinstein's actions were that of an open secret. Yet Olivia Wilde continues to be chummy with Harvey Weinstein and was seen hanging out with him outside of industry functions and was even name dropped in a 2015 allegation against Weinstein as a groomer of sorts. 
someone brought in to make the other girls feel more trusting for threesomes with Harvey Weinstein. But beyond that, Olivia has very close ties to yet another alleged Hollywood rapist who she was in cahoots with yet again to further her career. She starred in a film directed, written, and produced by Paul Haggis called Third Person alongside the likes of Liam Neeson and Maria Bello. However, where things get interesting is that Paul Haggis started a charity foundation in 2009 called the Artists for Peace and Justice. So let's leave the countless stories of outright fraud and sexual abuse that keep springing up from these NGOs which are non-government organizations or uh, not-for-profit organizations in Haiti in particular and, and let's also set aside the fact that a lot of these NGOs or charity organizations in Haiti just become yet another means through which children are trafficked into sex slavery or molested by the people they trust most in these organizations. But let me bring your attention back to Haggis himself. In 2018, the publicist Haley Breest accused him of and later sued him in a civil proceeding that has yet to reach its conclusion. But after her lawsuit, two other unnamed victims also came forward and claimed that Haggis also and them. As a result of these bombshell allegations, Haggis had to step down from his own freaking charity organization, of which Olivia Wilde has been on the board of directors since its inception. That says a lot. So she worked with him in the movie, and she was on the board of directors of his charity since its inception. And all I want to do to update you on the situation is to let you know is that the next day after I posted this video, her team commissioned yet another article in defense of her and I was personally tagged in it by the Daily Beast. And the timing is just laughable because clearly they saw the video and got offended by it. And I was tagged in this uh, Daily Beast article, which is just pathetic. They just kind of go through and list everything she's being criticized about and then just excuses it or uh or does what about ism like oh she's accused of this but what about this person doing this or what about it's just it's really pathetic they find any reason to try to justify her and to defend her because she's dating a media golden boy and harry styles if she was not dating harry styles and she was all of these issues were being brought up she would have been canceled properly by now but because she's dating harry styles she must be excused she must be defended the information must be suppressed and anyone criticizing her must be discredited and so what they did was they linked to my blog and then they completely misrepresented my arguments about her and they completely lied about the men I associated her with. They said Kevin Spacey and some other dude, I have no idea who the fuck he is. Clearly men who she has no legitimate associations with at all. So if someone read that article, they would be like, she's connecting her to Kevin Spacey and this other dude. Olivia had nothing to do with these people. So clearly that easily discredits me, right? It was lazy, it was cheap, and it's, it's dishonest. It's just dishonest. So the fact that people can only defend her by being dishonest or throwing red herrings into the situation or by misrepresenting my argument or straw manning it, it shows you what we're dealing with. These people have no integrity. She has no integrity. That has been proven time and time again. Her team has no integrity. And the media publications, she is paying to defend her and to promote her bullshit relationship with a queer or gay man shows they don't have integrity. None of these people do. The men she has been justifiably associated with are Anthony Kiedis. He is an admitted child rapist who admitted to raping at least two minors in his autobiography released in 2005, who is also a convicted sexual batterer, and his bandmates are as well. She worked with them in 2016, right after an article was released by a former Sony music exec talking about how that band sexually harassed her. Literally like the next month, Olivia worked with them on a music video to further her career and she continued to praise them for weeks and then uh, she continues to praise Anthony Kiedis, the worst of the lot, 
every year on his birthday as late as 2020 and suddenly she stopped praising him because clearly she has read and heard the things we are saying about her but this bitch has not deleted any of her posts on instagram praising and sucking his ass because that shows you who she is at her core paul haggis is the third most important uh connection she has that's deeply disturbing and it's also the one she is the most closely tied to mere weeks after i dropped that video telling you about her connection to Paul Haggis. Paul Haggis was arrested in Italy for again. We still have to say allegedly because it's just a charge for right now, but he was arrested for being again uh, by a woman who, who was found at an airport after he dropped her off there allegedly, and she was very distressed and in very bad shape. And it sounds like she was held against her will for multiple days by Paul Haggis, in addition to being raped. So this is yet another rape that this man has perpetrated against a female victim. And so this is all significant with regard to Olivia because not just because she worked with him on a movie, but because she has been on the board of directors of his charity since its inception. And she worked closely with him and this charity, this non-government organization in Haiti, um, I believe in 2009, but she has been on the board of directors of this charity since its inception. And if Paul Haggis is proven to be the rapist we know him to be, then you know there's no way in hell he operated a charity for almost 10 years in corruption ridden Haiti, totally above board and with pure intentions. It's not far fetched for me to believe he started this charity not only for personal gain, he probably used it as a vehicle to harm other women that just has not been uncovered yet. And the fact that she is associated with yet another serial rapist is insane. And I just want to say Harry's silence and complicity in this matter and that of his teams is a problem. His platforming Olivia Wilde and bringing her to his entire tour to sell his PR lies and to promote various projects for personal gain is a problem. This publicity scam with Olivia and Harry started started when they did a pap walk at Jeff's wedding. It was a private wedding. Plenty of celebrities who are huge and popular do private weddings and they are never seen by the paparazzi. Jeff's wedding of course had a slew of paparazzi present and they were able to photograph the new couple at Jeff's wedding and they were able to photograph Harry officiating Jeff's wedding. Well, in Harry's latest music video, he went out of his way to depict himself officiating a wedding and then being swept away by a dark storm, free falling in a panic, basically depicting things being beyond his control and ultimately resigning to his fate. And I believe that's what we see playing out right now. He has entered into a situation he wasn't entirely vetted on, especially her background and her associations. And now he's kind of trapped, in my opinion, this is what I believe, and he is showing I think signs that that he is regretful of what he has signed up for but that he's trapped and although I feel sympathy for him um I kind of don't because he's rich enough to break the contract this plays into a subject I want to talk about in my next video with regard to him being closeted by his music label I believe so I'll talk about that in the next video